But let's get Julio on the screen. I understand he's been watching the whole program today. How you doing, Jules? I'm good, buddy. How are you? 100%. Well, you heard what I wanted to talk to you about. What, what did you think when you heard yesterday four riders blew Achilles tendons in a, in a workout at Mosaic? Well, I won't lie. I was shocked. Um, you know, and disappointed for the Rough Riders, you know, I mean, to lose, you know, potentially three starters um, to injury like that is is devastating. Um, you know, I mean, I heard you guys earlier talking about, like, what were they doing? You know, I mean, I, you can totally see what they're doing, right? Guys are in town. They're excited about going out there. As long as the coaches aren't on the field, you know, the players can get together and work out and, and try to get themselves, you know, back into, you know, game shape. You know, this is going to be a very, very difficult month for the players. Um, no preseason. They're going to play some inter-squad games. Um, be not only taxing physically, but mentally. So um, guys trying to get a head start on that is, is, is no surprise. But four guys to Achilles injuries in, in, you know, in one practice is just unheard of. And um, again, as I said, you, it, it's devastating for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders who you know, are counting on probably three of those guys to be starters. Well, I think the CFL, what people forget a little bit is we don't really know what's going on. Like, are these players in Regina at the U of R? I don't know. I think they are. There's very little coverage of it. You know the Lions are obviously going to yeah. Kamloops, but we don't know the details. Cam I'm like, well, they got a great field turf surface at the University of Regina where the Rams practice. So I don't understand why you wouldn't just take the guys there, but I don't think it's a turf thing. It was, I guess, more than anything, Julio, and you must have reasoned this in your own head. It was a freak thing. Period. Yeah, absolutely. And and I and I heard you earlier talking about the fact that the time off has probably affected these guys. You, know, you think about you know football players, and I can speak from my experience. There, it's it's all about routine. You know, we're creatures of habit. So you know, season ends. Usually, most players will take about a month off, and then they're going to start getting back into it. Whether it's you know you're jogging or running or doing whatever you do, but you're you're never taking you know you're not taking four or five months off. And I think in this case, you probably got a lot of players that were once they reached the point where they knew they weren't going to play, probably a lot of them, they you know probably kept doing a few things, but it's not the same intensity that you have building up for the next season. So a lot of guys probably took some time off to probably heal their bodies and probably thought, you know, mentally mm -hmm. was they either some of them had to find other work. Some of them had to figure out what they were going to do. Are they going to keep going? So all those question marks you know, you, you stop taking care of your body the way that you normally do. And anytime you hear about Achilles injuries, you know, usually it's, you know, that, you know, you, you start tightening up and then it's that idea that you're going out and doing things and trying to explode and do, you know, explosive exercises. And that's where, you know, you get those kinds of, of, of um, injuries. So you can kind of see it. But again, one, two, but to have four in one day, is just it's just a freak accident. A uh, one more on this before we go to CFL, XFL, and then the Lions. But people are saying, "Hey, let's get Solomon Alamimian out of retirement." The president of the CFL Players <laughs> Association. You, as a guy that knows Solly really well, and be yeah. a guy that played in this league, and you did retire at one time. Can you talk about the fact that, like most guys I know, when they're out, they're out. See ya. They're not coming back. I mean, I can't imagine Solly's in game shape. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that. I'm sure probably. Knowing Solly the way I know him, he's, he's such a fierce competitor that, you know, all of us, I think, as we get older, whether you're an athlete or not, whatever you do in your spare time, whether it's play rec hockey or baseball, we always think that we're, you know, 22, 24 years old. And the reality is, is that you're when you get older, you just can't do the things that you used to do. So Solly, I'm sure probably in his heart is probably thinking to himself, hey, if I get that phone call, it would be really good for my, you know, for my ego. But you know, I mean, like you say, I, I, I would probably think it'd be pretty hard for him at this point. He probably has decided he's moving on and, and, and probably hasn't been working out or running. But I don't know that. Maybe also, maybe Sully's been working out like crazy, thinking that he might go. Um, you might have to phone him and ask him whether he's ready to come back because don't, don't kid yourself. They might be phoning him and seeing what his physical condition is. They probably already have. By the way, our director yeah. of scouting, Craig Smith, checks in. You know, Smitty, he says, what's up, Julio? How's everything on the West Coast? You and Moj staying out nice. of trouble? That's from Smitty, and I will <laughs> say congratulations on the new radio deal with CKNW yeah. for yourself and Moj, which I never thought for a second Thank that, that something wasn't going to come down the pipe. Um, 
We announced, we heard this week the CFL, XFL are done. The talks aren't happening. What was your initial reaction when you heard that? Well, you know, I think it was probably great timing because this is not the kind of thing that you want heading into a season with, you know, the talks and what are they going to do, what the potential is. So, you know, I'm glad that, you know, they put it, you know, off to the side. Uh, I, I, who knows whether or not they revisit the down, this down the road. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But I like the fact that the CFL came out prior to the season and just said, listen, you don't mean that we've, we've tabled these talks. We're not going to talk anymore. Um, and let's just get down to the business of playing football. I think all of us um, who love the game, who love watching the game, um, want to just get back to football. I want to talk about rosters. I want to talk about potential you know, teams that are and, and the young players that they're bringing in. It's just nice to talk and, and, and now get excited about seeing some football on television and, seeing, watch, and going and watching in person. So um, I'm just excited about that. I'm glad this whole thing is kind of going to be behind us for a while. I'm sure it's probably going to resurface, but let's, let's talk about it at another time and let's get excited about the season. Fair enough. Let, I'm holding you to that. I'll bring you back after the season, and we will talk about it. I'm just <laughs> okay hey, for sure. Thumbs up or thumbs down? You played in the '90s U.S. expansion. I mean, I think we could do the same thing all over again. It was so much fun. Like, are you thumbs up or thumbs down on a merger? Um, you mean I, I won't lie. As a player, it was exciting, right? It, you know, it was still the same game. Um, but we were playing it against, you know, American competition. So that was exciting. You know, I mean, anytime a player gets a chance to, you know, we start traveling down into the States and, you, you know, you, you know, football's got a, there's a different vibe down there when it comes. Right? So it was exciting. I won't lie, you know, going to Sacramento, going to San Antonio, Baltimore. Um, they, it was exciting to go to those places and play. Um, but, you know, I mean, I know the big thing is about the rules, right? That how, how do they tweak the game in order to, um, you know, to accommodate down there. I, that's, I mean, I, I, I've got a couple of ideas on maybe some of the things that they might try to do. You know, you go four downs, go unlimited motion. I don't know what they would what they would do, but, um, you know, it, it was. I won't lie though, as a player and getting the opportunity and and, and play against different guys and, and going to different cities was exciting. Yeah, well, and I, my biggest regret, I just missed it. Just missed it coming oh, into you? the CFL. Yeah, I, well, I came in in 99 was my first year. I would uh, The stories are legendary, obviously, from those road trips yes. and the games and everything. Yes. Uh, so you're right, though. A topic for another time, the rules discussion, which I love that discussion, but we have a season in front of us. So the BC Lions really seem to have a vibe, Julio. I sense it. Do you? Well, you know, I mean, I, I think that uh, people here are excited about, you know, one um, – getting a uh, Rick Campbell out here, who's a proven winner, um, you know, having Wally Buono here for all those years and providing the stability that he did, um, you know, you get kind of used to, you know, having everything done the right way. Right. Uh, and the consistency in play. And it was, you know, obviously when they, when they hired Clay Brooks and, and Ed Hervey uh, leaving now and the coaching change and they needed to make, they needed to make this move. Like, you know, Rick Campbell's a no brainer, right? He's, He's a winner. He's a proven winner. He's grown up in this league. He, league. he knows what it takes to win. Um, and that's what this market needs, right? And so now he's, along with Neil McAvoy, they're going to be able to put their stamp on this team um, as far as being co-general managers. I think they they brought in some good pieces. There's still some question marks, though, right? The, you know, I think everyone's going to talk about, you know, Michael Riley and, you know, that offensive line, the fact they gave up, what, 58 sacks last year. But Kelly Bates coming in halfway through the year really changed that offensive line and, you know, how they approached the game. And they were much, much better in the second half of the season. And then now getting Riker Matthews in free agency, get him to play that right side. Um, you know, look across the board. You've got Matthews, you've got Sue Chung, you've got Norman or, or Godber. They're going to be battling out for that center spot. You've got Hunter Stewart and you've got Figueroa on the left side. So solid a solid offensive line. For me, the game's won or lost in the line of scrimmage. So offensive line-wise, defensive line, now that's another question. J.R. Tavai was brought over in free agency. Chris Crash Kasher was brought over in free agency. But if you look at the list of, what, 16 or 18 defensive linemen that they brought, they've got guys that got NFL experience, but there's very few names that you're going to recognize there. So they're rebuilding that entire defensive front. And to me, that's going to be where the biggest question mark is. 
I probably should move on from the 2011-ish era Lions that Wally was in charge of. Remember when you guys could get consistent quarterback pressure with a four-man yeah. rush, period. I mean, the likes like that may never be seen again. Remember that? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, that was to – hey, when this team had Cam Week and, and you know, they were able to, like you say, get pressure with four guys – Man, I mean, I talked to any defensive coordinator. You know, when you're able to do that, you can do a lot of different things in the back end and, and have a lot of success. And they did. But um, that to me is 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 the big key that getting those four. But now, even the game has evolved now, where more teams are doing it, and and rightfully so. Is there they're carrying seven, eight defensive linemen because of the rotation, getting fresh bodies in there because of the importance of getting after the quarterback and being able to disrupt that timing. The quarterbacking in this league is getting better and better. And if you don't get after a guy like Bo Levi or Michael Riley um, or Trevor Harris, they're rhythm guys. And if you don't, if you don't get into their, get it, uh, disrupt that rhythm, you mean you look at the statistics and from the quarterbacks and the, the top tier guys, they're completing 70 plus percent of their passes, you know? So <laughs> It puts a lot of strain on your defense when you got guys who are back there who are making really good decisions and know how to get rid of the ball. It, it puts a lot of strain on your defense. And the one way you can com combat that is, is getting after them. And so that front four is so critical in getting after the quarterback. Well, I'll tell you what, it is nice to be talking ball again, Julio. Ball for all. Look forward to listening to you this year in the Lions broadcast booth. And there's that smile I missed. We'll be hey, seeing you hey, uh, buddy. August 6th, buddy. I will. I look forward to that. That should be that should be un unbelievable. So I'm looking forward to that. And plus, you know what? It's been great watching your show. Now I know. How come I've never been to the Bad Greek? <laughs> I'll take you if you want. Huh? I'll take you. Yeah, I, I was going to say. You I mean all the all the years that I've been going there? You never told me about the Mad Greek. I love Greek food. Now I maybe, got a place to go. Maybe because you're Italian. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's only 40 miles down the road. Thanks, Julio. Appreciate appreciate <laughs> you. Okay, buddy. Julio Thanks, Caravada. Cheers. Yeah, you too. Uh, Longtime color voice of the BC Lions. Great Cup champion. Punter quarterback combo. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.